Okay, we are now live. Thank you. All right, it's nine o'clock oh. now. Okay, let's go, guys. Excellent. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my friends. Welcome to 2022 ABF Online Talk, Passion for Birding, every Friday. We have a very special topic today. Philip will tell us about Chinese birding culture. Wow, you know, it's so different because, you know, mostly we have um, birding hotspots in here and there. And today we're talking about the Chinese birding culture. Philip Hur, our very old friend of ABF. He is the owner and general manager of Alpine Birding based in Chengdu, Sichuan Province, China. You know, Alpine Birding operates birding tours for international birders to China, especially in Sichuan, Yunnan, and Tibet. They also do ecological education program for children. Philip was major in mining industry in college. Can you imagine that? But he has devoted his life to tourism as a tour guide and later a bird guide after working a few years for a mining company. You know, while the, the tourism business in the world has been stopped by coronavirus, Philip keeps moving forward. You know, he's now studying EMBA at Xi'an Jiao Tong University from 2019. And he's pursuing a master program of tourism management at Sichuan University since 2022. So, you know, maybe, you know, next time when we meet Philip, he will earn two master degrees. <laughs> My God, you know, that's something special. It's very good for him. And Philip, you know, um, speaks fluent in Chinese and Japanese. And it's interesting that, you know, his last name reads he in Chinese, but in English can be confusing. You know, some people read it he as like he or he. even hey. <laughs> kind of interesting. So, my friends, let's welcome Philip He or uh, he or, 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 or hey, you know, or, or, or just never mind. Philip, please. Okay. Hello, everybody. So, oh. now first. First, uh, let me share my. Ni hao. Ni hao, Okay. No, just a moment. I need to do something wrong. Just a moment. Okay, just a moment. Sorry, just. Uh, it is it's, okay. it's okay, my friend. It's yeah, all good. You look so serious, but smile a little bit. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, where is it? Just a moment. Let me find this just. What are you working? Uh, how's the weather where you are right now, Philip? Uh, good. Very good. Just a moment. Uh, okay. Very good. Okay, let me Excellent. See. Andrew, don't bother him. Let him work. Uh, okay. <laughs> <Looks so nervous. laughs> Okay, can you see it now? It's coming. Okay, yes, we got it. Yes. Got okay. it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Very good. So, hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. Good morning, everybody. It is such an honor for me to have this chance to share some of my ideas about Chinese culture and Chinese birder and, uh, you know, the Chinese birds. Uh, you know, China is an ancient civilization. So there are lots of unique things we can share. And this information can help us to understand the Chinese and the Chinese birders better. Because now we will have more, maybe after COVID-19, uh, we will have more and more Chinese birders going to the world, looking, enjoying the beautiful birds in your country. And we also have uh, beautiful birds here waiting for you to enjoy. So this uh, sharing is aimed at uh, providing a kind of bridge 
for you to understand the Chinese birds and also, you know, you know, in the future, we have more bir birders coming to your country to enjoy your birds. So I took this photo. I like this photo a lot. Actually, I just took this photo uh, with Bela Nikonik in Qinghai province. When we did a photo safari there, we saw lots of wildlife there. And, uh, you know, when we see birds, we enjoy wonderful sceneries and lots of other things. And so I really in, like this uh, photo. And, uh, you know, this small person standing on their eyes is me uh, looking for wildlife. And you can imagine how difficult it is. Uh, but it is wonderful experience okay let me start my series you know my talk okay first uh what i'm going to talk about this evening so first i will talk about the chinese geography because this is important for us to understand uh, the diversity of chinese culture and the diversity of chinese birds and uh, because they provide very different habitats for the Chinese people and also for the Chinese birds. And then I will talk about the birds in Chinese history because in, Chi in Chinese history, actually we have a long history of worshiping birds. And, and in Chinese history, also we have kind of a changing mental mentality toward the birds. So it's very interesting for us to read how the birds in the mentality of Chinese change with the time. And then I will talk about how birding started in China. And uh, well, this also will help us to understand. Uh, so when, you know, understand why, uh, you know, the Chinese, the birds, birding in China still are now at the beginning stage. And then we will, I will share my idea about what make a birding or great bird, you know, birding in China different. Yeah, we can look for birds in lots of countries. And I would say each country can always provide you a unique experience. I was so uh, you know, uh, I was amazed at the birds in Malaysia, Philippines, Costa Rica, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, and I am looking forward to getting a chance to look for birds in Cambodia, in other countries, Asian countries. But what makes the bird in China different? So I'm going to share with it. And then we also, I will share about my understanding about the Chinese birders, because they might become an important travelers in your country, and there are two different, different group of them. So when we understand them better and understand their needs better, actually we can make a better itinerary for them and they can enjoy the trip better. And uh, then, we will, I will share my ideas about our understanding of a great birding trip. Because culture, in, my, in our idea, is just the rules, a kind of rules we everybody follows, a rules formed in history. So what is a kind, what is a, you know, what makes a great birding trip? So these are the information I'm going to share this evening. And first, so look at this map. You will see first, you know, Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. This is very unique, known as a roof of world. And then in the northern part of China, actually there's two parts. To the western part of China, you see the lots of desert, dry areas. And the eastern part of northern China, forest, cold weather. And this kind of different habitat provide very unique 
environment for the birth of endemic culture in these places. And then you can see southern part of China, this is the most productive areas in China. And here you can see a little place we call Sichuan Basin. And then you can see this, this called Hendai um, Mountain Range. Philip, Philip, sorry to um, interrupt. Can you please use the arrows on the screen so that we can see your next slide? Okay, sorry. Arrows, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank, sorry. So, how can I use? Uh, uh, you use the Can you see the arrow? But you, you, your slice not moving. No, it's uh, it's moving here, but it's uh, no, we don't, uh, we don't see it. Let me see what's the, the oh, sorry. What's it? Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, can you move? Can you can you see the arrow moving? No, no, hey, it's very strange.看得到吗？对，你的画面没有变，还是在第一页。不，这个是第二页的嘛？对，但是我……我们看的还是第一页。这不，我现在说，我这是第二页，不好意思哈，我再重新站起。哦，看到了，看到了，我知道这个什么回
你把那个云字体那个那个那个叉叉按一下，让让那个云字体跑掉。对对对，没看哪个云字体？你上面不是有那个右边有字幕那个地方？嗯，对不对？画面上面那有有有一个小叉叉，你把按一下，然后把那边去掉，用这个可以。没有，这个还是不行，稍微。他这个怎么回事啊？刚才都是很正常的。We've tested, but it was okay. Yeah. Oh, it's just, I'm very sorry. I apologize, guys. It's no problem. It's always okay. Let's just do it this way. I think it's okay. 不，这个不行啊！这个这样看的，这样可以吗？你你你看啊，你的画面的那个。右边的哈，嗯，你看中文字写的这个什么云字体没有？没有，你看不到这个画面哈。没有，看不到，看不到。嗯，好。菲勒，这个就是 yes， 在你的画面右侧有一个全部下载和替换的按钮，在那个上面有一个叉，你把那个关了，然后我们就可以看到更大一点的画面。全部下载和按钮在右边的那个没有啊？那这个，你看不到吗？哦，你的画面是全部的画面是吧？没有，我也是单的。好，你们你有没有看那个那个右边一个一排红色的写的这个全部下载跟替换那个那个有没有看到？在你的画面的右边有一个红色的、哦。我知道，就是现在更多嘛。看来你的画面跟我们画面不太一样，贝拉，你是不是再跟他讲一下，怎么怎么怎么弄？啊，我是在我从头开。好，我再再试一遍，从头开始一遍，可以吗？要不然你这样可以，你再一次，要不然这样子画面也可以了，我们就这样子看的。OK， 嗯 ，OK， so now we maybe a next map we can you can understand better. So first we can divide. So can you see it this one? Yes. Okay, so we can uh divide China into four major areas. You say lost. West part of China, so this place is mostly covered by desert, and then the north, north and the north eastern part of China, forest and very cold weather, and then the Tibetan Plateau, this part, and is low as a roof of world, and then the southern part of China, is also known as the most productive and fertile lands. Well, in the middle. In the transition area between the southern in southern part of China and the the, the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, so this place is called Henduai Mountain Range. This is known as one of the uh, thirty six uh, hotspots for biodiversity. And then, uh, so we first understand the evolution of the birding culture in Chinese history. So in early times, when I say early times, I mean three thousand years ago, an early stage, and then at this time, actually we worship birds. So I use the word serve. So we serve birds because we worship them. Okay, we take them as kind of god, and then in the recent, maybe in Qing Dynasty, in recent China, it is、uh, regarded as kind of. A, Servant or the bird serve us, so we cage them and we listen. We enjoy their calls, beautiful sounds and calls. And then now we actually love them in nature instead of in cage. So this I think、um, bring very good passion for the future. And well. Now I talk about the ancient time, you know, sir birds. So at that time, so very typical example is that we use them as a kind of totem, national totem. So you may have heard of it, you know, Chinese totem is dragon, and then that is for male image. For female is a phoenix, phoenix, and songbird. But this songbird is not the songbird we enjoy now. Instead, it is a The Chinese people's belief that a bird can work as a song. So we later on, I will show you some of the、uh, artifacts we find here in China.、Uh, 
And then the birds also mentioned in lots of Chinese literatures. Just for example, we have a very famous early book uh, in 19, about two, uh, three thousand, uh, two thousand years ago. More than two thousand years ago. So that's called Book of Songs of the 300 uh, poems or songs inside. Forty they mentioned birds in 42 of them. Okay. And then uh, uh, lots of uh, Chinese artists have painted birds in their artistic works. And we also have lots of legendary stories about the birds. And we give special connotation or meaning to some special birds like a crane, magpie, cuckoo, and a crow. And here you can see, this is so-called uh, a songbird, uh, you know, you can see it is shaped like a song. It unearthed in Jinsa Head Museum. Four birds just to, uh, fly around this song. So four birds stand for four seasons, four seasons, four different seasons. And so you can imagine at that time, birds is regarded as kind of God, you know, can bring us light. And then to the right of this, uh, uh, you know, this slide, you can see there's a tree, bronze tree, but this is not a special, this is not a common tree. So in ancient China, people believe we live in a world, but there's another world that existed in heaven. But how can we connect? These two places. So there's a tree. Now from the tree, we can just use a tree as kind of ladder to go to the heaven. So this tree is used for, uh, you know, worshiping ceremonies. And what special is that you see that the birds standing on it on this tree, the lion birds here. So the Chinese mythology says that. These birds are song. So each one of them will go to the sky, give us sunlight each and every day in turns. So you can see lying birds here. And you can see a dragon coming from the heaven to earth, you see? So you can see how important is the birds in the minds of ancient Chinese. And then, We can see uh, for the for this. So, what kind of uh, information or contribution we get from worshiping birds in Chinese culture? So, we can see our ancestors. They desire for freedom. They hope they have wings. They can fly, and they also the birds also greatly expanded their artistic imagination. And most importantly, uh, they help them to hold awe and respect for, you know, for, uh, for the nature. And then there's another idea we call the harmony or the union between nature people. So this is a very important idea, possibly have been greatly influenced by the Chinese way of worshiping birds. And then we talk about, you know, we, was, we can also show some birds not serve the people or we enjoy them. So I'm here, it might, might not be correct word here, serve, but I just uh, uh, use this word to, you know, help us to, to get some ideas. So cage birds. So why we cage, why people cage birds, put birds in the cages? So they want interactions with birds and they enjoy their beautiful privilege and they enjoy their beautiful course. So some birds are caged because of their beautiful course. Well, some birds 
were caged because of their capability of interacting with people. And some birds are called because of caged because of their beautiful songs. So you can see there's are some common caged birds like Hua Mei, Chinese Hua Mei. So most people keep this bird because they can enjoy the beautiful songs of this bird. And then different kinds of parrots, they can in interact and the parrot can always mimic the human cause. So, and the neothrics, and the rabbit neothrics, they have a beautiful plumage and people enjoy. And then white eye also because they are they to people in cage put them in the cages just because of the plumage beautiful plumage but here we see this is a kind of tradition in old times now still some old people do it but it is not very common for the young people to keep caged birds they no longer believe this okay and then robin they can sing beautiful songs and the minor for interactions And here I show you some pictures about the birds. We let me just try again. Sorry. So can you see the screen, Victor? Yes, very good. So can you see the very bird good. picture, Hua Mei? Yes, no problem. Very good. Okay. Then you can see this is a Hua Mei. Uh, we we often keep them, and it is called Chinese Hua Mei, meaning uh, painted eyebrow you can see the eyebrow like a painted being painted and this bird have been having a cage and then the parakeet gray headed parakeet but there are many other parakeet uh, parrots being uh, caged in china so this is a kind of a you know tradition we have but we still have is for some people and you see red beard and new threats very common and very beautiful and then blew through to the robin. And the Japanese white eye. And the crystal minor. Because these people keep this bird. And then for in Chinese culture, uh, some birds carry special meaning, just like in, in other countries. For example, crane. People believe crane stands for longevity. So there's a lots of lots of artist works showing cream and with palm tree to express their wishes for longevity. And the magpie stand for good celebrations, good luck. And the cuckoos stand for diligence uh, because their call sound very much like a Chinese sowing this, uh, the rice. And it is a hot, you know, it is a also a tradition here. You know, the cuckoo calls like this, cuckoo, cuckoo. Or in Chinese means sowing the rice, sowing the rice. So, and the crow stand for Fair good bad luck. Okay. Can Fair you see it? Yes. Your slides just stop moving again. We can't see it. You can't see it? Can you mm. see it? Yeah, you can see it. 我現在就是點他的邊上那個,我就是邊了,你們可以可以可以。這樣你們看得到嗎?好,你看大屏幕,對,好,可以,好。可以嗎?這樣。好,你把上面那個百分之百那個把它縮小,有沒有?它又要有一個百分比那個,你把它縮小,不要百分之百。可以可以嗎?
骚的，他这个东西今天怎么回事儿？不是我这儿又不动了呢。十第十四章。我知道，这他这边又不动了。你们看也看不到是不是 ？Sorry, you can't see it, right? So let's try again. Let's try again. Just it's just so frustrating. Can you see it? Okay, Japanese white eyes. Yes. Okay, can you see it? Okay, good. Okay, then we talk about the. Uh, so can you see it? Start of yeah. a bird in China is the same mm -hmm. screen. Yeah. Okay. So generally speaking, uh, birding started quite recently in China. So there are three group of people started the birding, and we need to thank the Westerners. Okay. So because the earliest birders actually are Westerners. And as early as in 1980s, Western birding companies started organizing birding trips in China. So they made a great contributions. Even now, the most authoritative uh, bird field guide is aided by the Western people. So they made a great contribution for the birding in China. And even myself, I learned birding from Western people. So I worked for Tropical Birding that time. So as a logistic guide, so they made a great contribution for the, for the you know, I just started the, this whole industry. And then we also have some small number of academic, uh, uh, you know, the university professors or students. They study birds, so they also do birding. And there's a very small number of matters in Chinese, uh, you know, in 1980s, 1990s or 2000s. Even in re just in recent years, so we get a more and more birders. So birding in China starts quite recently. So that's because because of that. So I think uh, we still have lots of we still have lots of things to do to improve the birding experiences in China. And then, so for birding, so what make birding? In China, different. So China is a unique country with a special uh, culture, and if, so birding in China will be very different. As I show, I have shown you. So we have so many different kinds of habitats, so many different kind of birds. So first highlights or first uh, important factors that make your birding trip in China is that we have a large number of endemics. 110, sure, not so many compared with even Philippines because they have so many islands, but these endemics are from different habitats, not just from the similar habitats. So this make it very unique and special. And then in China, we have a, almost all kinds of landscapes in the world. So while you are doing birding trip here, you can also enjoy a great view of spectacular landscapes. You know, on the Qinghai Plateau, you see different landscapes. If you go to Xinjiang or Gansu, you see different landscapes. And if you come to Sichuan, mountains and plateaus. So always you can see. And also then, because of this kind of uh, uh, topographical differences. So we also have lots of unique regional culture. You know, in China, we have so-called 55 ethnic minorities. They live in different places. So in ancient time, these places are comparatively locked. That means they do not have lots of communications with outside the world. Then they regional culture is preserved well. So this can be another bonus for birding in China. And then safety, you know, China forbid guns. So no one can carry guns except the policeman, you know. So it is one of this, in my view, it is one of the safest place in the world. It's very safe. You can always travel safely. And then after years of economic development, now we have very good infrastructure. So you have multiple choices, airplanes, bullet trains, public buses, 
private cars. So always lots of options you can choose to make your birding trip unique. And then we, you know, because we have uh, China is big, we have uh, many different kind of locations, different kind of birds. So you can almost come to China looking for birds all year round. In winter, you can go to Yunnan province. In spring, you can go to Sichuan province. In summer, you can go to Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. So they always, there are birds in certain places you can enjoy in China. And then here I will show you, share with you some of the bird photos I took. You know, black pheasants. So if you go to Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, it's not very difficult. Sometimes you can see lots of them because for the Tibetan people, because they believe in Tibetan Buddhism, so they do not kill the hunt the animals. They do not kill the wildlife. So there, birds live in harmony with the Tibetan people. So you can see lots of wonderful birds there. And reefs, pheasants. Now these birds you can see in Hunan province. So all in central part of China. So, and then you see another black pheasant. You see, this is subspecies of black pheasants and many you found in Tibet. It is so close, you can see here and you can also see a mono here, you know. So, and then you can see Timnik trackpan. So nowadays, if you go to the right places, so it is not very difficult. You can always see them, see these beautiful birds. And, you know, this is a Himalaya mana. So very easy if you go to the right uh, monastery. You can even take pho photograph with your mobile phone. And well, this can be relatively difficult bird. This is called a uh, uh, Chinese mono. So, because here in their habitat, so uh, they did, they, they live, let me put it this way, they live in different habitats. So in their habitat, generally there's a, you can't, you can't find the monasteries. So you have to see them in the later. And sometimes this can be difficult, but sometimes can be also very close. And uh, for the birds, and then there's some, you know, small birds, giant laughing thrush, slow pigeon, crest ibis, uh, derby and parakeets, and ender laughing thrush. So lots and lots of them. And in China, you can see lots of different kinds of uh, laughing thrushes, uh, parabules, and the bobby, uh, bobbiners. And beside the birds, you can also see some other stuff. Landscape, you can see these are some of the landscapes just in the birding destinations. So, stew pass on the top of mountain pass where you can find the accenters, alpine accenters, uh, rosy pipit, and the uh, rose finches. And then, this is, this is placed picture is actually Jiu Jai Go. Uh, it's very famous and actually it's also very important birding destination. And you can see waterfalls and the Tibetan villages. So you can see always many different kinds of landscape in the one trip, the monasteries underneath these uh, slow capped mountains and the range of mountain peaks just spreading out in front of you. And then the Re Tibetan river with, uh, you know, holy scriptures inscribed on the rocks in the Buddhism is so important. And in the middle, this is Tibetan languages. And actually this is called Buddhist holy scriptures called a six two word, Omani Ben Ben Hong. That means if you chant this two word, six two word, you will build up your karma and in your future life, you'll get a better destination.
And you see here, this is Tibetan Plateau, the first, first picture, Tibetan Plateau. Uh, it's in upper reaches of a yellow river in Rorga. And the mountainous areas, the Tibetan villages uh, with uh, watchtowers and the rice party fields in Yunnan province and the earth forest in Yunnan province. So you can always have lots of other things can be easily ended to your birding itinerary. So when you look for birds in China, never equal this kind of important cultural heritages or landscapes, because you can have one stone, not just two birds, but multiple birds. So you can make the best use of your time. And then we also have mammals, you see, you can see mammals, uh, golden monkey, Tibetan macaque, and they see uh, a Tibetan fox and the Sutran pecan. So they just uh, share the same, same bird habitat with the birds you are looking for. So you can make your birding trip a wonderful trip, include lots of sense. And you can see just by the side of the road, paved the road, you can see blue sheep. Blue sheep is uh, important food resources for the slow leopards. If you're lucky enough, even if you see a slow leopard, you counter it, it is possible. And a wild yak, you can see, knowing for their strength and power, and they are very beautiful, especially you can imagine if you go to the right place and with a slow cape the mountain behind and uh, photograph them, it can be, uh, you know, stunning. And if you look at their eyes, their alertness, and that make your trip really training. And the Kiang or Tibetan S, you can see just by this crossing road. So if you go to the right place, very easy. And last year, we encountered two Tibetan foxes. They are playing just outside their den. So you can get a lots of photos. We take photos. They totally equal to us. So always there's something you can end to your birding itinerary. And then, you know, there's also, we have so much culture, lots of shoes. The, uh, you know, picking opera, the meow people ceremony and their special musical instruments, the lush dances, and then, you can even have enjoy the dances after birding in your restaurant. Like uh, this group of birders we had. And you know, if when you travel to the Tibetan area to, to China, you can never, never miss the chance of seeing different people. Four. You can see here, you can have lots of uh, opportunity to interact with local people and uh, seeing their beautiful costumes and, uh, you know, enjoy their unique tradition. You know, they have their, their pipe, water pipe, the smoke, and uh, they are the Tibetan, or they, you know, they go ethnic minority people, e people in their costumes. And they, they, had some Kamba people and they are, you know, their hair, hair dress, hair styles. So lots of things you can always enjoy to make your trip unique. And well, so now we, we talk about a little information about the Chinese birders. So generally speaking, for the Chinese birders, we have two major groups. So first, people who only want to enjoy the beauty of birds, okay? So for this group of people, generally speaking, they're young. The number of them growing very fast in recent years, especially uh, for those born in 1980s, 1990s. So they get a better education. So they 
have a strong desire for natural beauties. So they, these are birds, they are creatures. Okay, so they have very strong personality. I love insects, I love birds, I love flowers. They have very, very strong personality. And then they have, uh, they know birds pretty well. They, they know what kind of bird looking for. They can find out the bird from field guide. And, you know, they are pretty adventurous with good, you know, with, with travel knowledge. So they can find the information. They can go to Malaysia on their own and find the birding guide or birding company there and uh, enjoy the birds there. Uh, so they have, a, they, they also can speak English. So for this kind of group of people, they represent the younger Chinese birding, you know, population. And we also have a, another group of bird food, you know, birders. Well, I mean, let me put it, the birders, bird photographers. For them, so they mostly retired. They have the, you know, they, the number of them also growing very fast. Because they have nothing to do. They found, uh, you know, photographing birds can be great fun. And well, they have a different education background. Some of them get some education, but lots of them do not, didn't get a good education in their youth, you know, when they were young. Uh, but they are retired, they have money. Economically, they are much stronger than the bird, young birders. And they have their very good gears, camera gears, long lanes, good cameras. And well, but the difference from the birders, another group of birders, they love bird photos. And they don't know what the, mostly they don't know what is the name of the birds so they are photographed. So they only know, oh, that's a beautiful bird. I want to photograph. They care much less about the name of birds. Okay. And then they always love, always want to travel to the places where, where they can get a better opportunities to photograph birds. And well, they are generally speaking, compared with the young birders, they are relatively conservative. So they can't get uh, uh, you know, they travel information on the internet, on the outer, so they must rely on their friends and they have very limited language skills. So for this group of people, then when they travel, so they need a Chinese burden guide and they, they don't want to travel too much. They want to sit in one place, or photograph lots of birds. So these are a group of people. This, lots of times, these two group of birds, birders, they come, you know, there's a conflict between them. I think lots of countries have the similar problems. And then, so for our understanding of a great birding trip, yeah, sure, a great trip can, see, can consist of many, many elements, but um, I put it in three categories. First, the beauty of birds. So this is important for a birding trip. We will see birds. We see the beauty of birds. Well, I guided some some birding groups. They just count the list. So when they go to the field, they find out, oh, this is a, a rufous head robin. Okay, rufous head robin, we take it. Okay, it's okay, it's over. Uh, but I think of the, for the birding, the most important thing that we enjoy the beauty of the birds and then second, you know, you need a good itinerary made by professional hand. So China is so big, have so many different things and your time is limited. You want to make the best use of time. Yes, you need to consider all the factors. Well, local professionals, they understand their local situation much better. So they can save you lots of time. And then another thing I think maybe a few building companies would mention, but I think it's very important because I have worked in the travel industry for 20 years, more than 20 years. I think the beauty of humanity, you know, 
we first your bird guide will be friendly and helpful and good at making up making a good atmosphere for everybody to enjoy the birding trip and then we need to see the beautiful people with their beautiful smiles in the wild you know in, in the desolation bird desolations I was so impressed when I go to Costa Rica or Malaysia or Sri Lanka. How friendly local people are and what kind what kind of impact I got from the smile of local people to my heart. So I think this is very important. We live in a new age. Well, this age should be featured by the beauty of humanity so we can enjoy. So I think this is a very three important, very important three quite uh, factors for a good birding trip. And the second, I think that another thing we will do birding, we need to, I use the word nurturing a good birding culture. This is important because when we do birds, we need to know the really build the relations with the birds. They are not just an object we see, but they are the living creatures like us in the world. So we share with them, we share the birds with them, just like we visit the friends, we are equal. So in this way, I think we need to, we shouldn't bother them too much. We just enjoy, enjoy their beauty. And in my opinion, you know, we need to protect the environment. This is a way we protect ourselves. But the best protection is not from the law, not from the people who enforce the law, but from the heart, our inner heart, from our love coming from the bottom of our hearts. We love it, we love the birds, then general definitely we want to protect them so the best protection comes from love well a good birding trip should build up this kind of culture with love and then i think uh, you know in only in this way only if we everybody we contribute to construction of this kind of birding culture, then we will have a future, bright, better future. Because no matter we like each other or we do not like each other, we have to face, we are all living creatures in the world. We need to share the same world with the people in China, in Malaysia, Philippines, you know, in all the other people in the world. So this birding, can change our attitude toward ourselves, our people, our environment, our destinations. So this actually is something I'm going to share, but this is something easy to see, but difficult to achieve because people are so different in the world. So this will be something like these footprints. We, of the slow leopards, we, photographed during our trip in Qinghai. But in our view, travel is an art. Sure, birding is an art. And it is a process of reading and enjoying. So with this uh, you know, sharing, I hope you can get some ideas about the Chinese birding culture, the, the culture of China, the bird in China, Chinese birders. And uh, now I will leave the time for your questions. Uh, sorry, man. Just uh, I'm struggling with this, uh, uh, you know, sharing. Uh, I wasted lots of time. Sorry. Okay. I hope you enjoyed, you know, this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Philip. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you. We encounter some yeah. some troubles, but still, you know, we got a a very informative presentation from you. 
Thank you very much. So, um, you, you may stop sharing now. It's clip, you may, you may stop sharing. Stop. Then we can, then we can see, then we can, yes, just stop sharing, then we can see oh. everybody. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Mm. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay, now we are taking questions. Yes. Anybody? Just show me your hand. Okay, Todd, please. Is there also an opportunity to see pandas while you're watching birds? Yes. You're, you're asking the right person. <laughs> yes. Actually, there's a two, two different ways, okay? First, we see pandas in the panda breeding center. So actually, oh. nowadays, panda enjoy very good weather. So all the breeding centers have very nice habitats. So in the past, for example, Chengdu Panda Breeding Center. So in the past, we go there, we tell our people, this is a panda base and everybody's busy with birds. So, oh, panda base. Okay, yes. And the second, some bird habitats, actually uh, some bird habitats also important habitats for pandas. So we have some, you know, there are some birding trips. They saw pandas in the wild when they're looking for birds in the panda habitats. Yes, but remember, panda is a very, uh, very shy animal and they hide in the bamboo clusters. The only time you can see them is that climb up the tree and take a rest. When they stay in the bamboos, it's so difficult, though it is very easy to see panda pools in the panda, uh, in the panda uh, you know, habitat. So yes, uh, actually there's a quite a number of uh, panda reserves where you have ch chance to see pandas and also birds. Yeah, though it is the chance is not a good. It's quite a slim, to be honest. Thank you. Which which season is the best? Is it is it winter or spring or? Good question. Very good question. Generally, if you want to see both, uh, if you want to see pheasants, pheasants, then I think uh, much can be good for pandas and can be also good for pheasants. And uh, well, if you want to see the breeding birds, small birds, then May, May. But generally in May, because the road leaf, road, uh, the trees have fully growing with the leaves. So it is a different, the chance to see pandas is smaller. Thank you. Yes, uh, hi, hi, Philip. Uh, how hi. many, how many birds average number uh, is possible to see in a two weeks trip through China? Good question. Uh, it depends on where you go. If you go to Yunnan province, so generally you can see 200 to 300 birds species in Yunnan province. Well, it's low in full numbers, okay, for the and well, if you go to Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, I'm very sorry, you can only see from 100 to 200 because there are not so many different bird species, but you, what you see can be very unique, very special to that place. And also you will be rewarded with many different other things, just like in Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you have a good chance to see mammals and uh -huh. also Tibetan culture. So different, yeah, thank you. Good question. And, and sorry, how many uh, average number of mammals you can see in a two weeks trip? Uh, good question. This really depends on where you go. If you go to Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, let me say 10, 10 to 20, something like that. 10, 10, 10, more than 10, something. Well, if you go to, you know, other parts like Sichuan, Tangjiahe, these places you can see maybe around 10, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, there's some nice places to see mammals, even just a lesser panda. If you go to the right place, just like a, a Labajo Nature Reserve or Wawusan, the chance to see them is very well. For example, in Wawusan, it is a great place for the parabules and for some uh, other birds, you know, there. 
just like a file capped teeth, you know, just, and uh, uh, you know, not touch something like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, hi, Lucky. Hi, Philip. Yes. Hi. Hey, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you again. So yeah. 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 Um, if we go to uh, Sichuan province, yeah. how many endemic species do you have localized to the Sichuan province? A good question. Very good question. In Sichuan province, uh, I didn't count that. Should be 20. Let, let me, maybe after, maybe after this, uh, I will check out. I will check out. Maybe my colleague account will be better. We have uh, Luke. Luke, you, he, he's a, a birding expert. He, you know. Luke, are you here? There? Uh, yes. Hey, Philip. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. Just, you, you, maybe you know, know better than, you know, about birds than me. Okay. Thank you. So, so you're asking me about Sichuan. Actually, um, I don't know very much about Sichuan. I'm only in Yunnan, uh, which is oh, not okay, known for its but Bella, I'm sure she knows. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. Bella. Bella, are you still with us? Bella? Okay, well... Uh, oh, well, sorry, we yeah. Okay, well, Bella, um, okay, right. Yeah, that's... Uh, I'm, I don't know exact numbers, sorry, uh, but it's around, it's around 20, Philip is right. I'll check it. I mean, you, can, you guys can go ahead and ask questions. I'll give you a answer later. Okay, right. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, Philip, is there a place that we can see lynx and snow leopard at the same time? Yes, in Qinghai. In Qinghai, and also there are two, two kinds of places. So hmm. one place is that uh, you want to stay in a good hotel, <laughs> go out every day, and uh, then that's a different place. So that, that place, and another place that we drive to the wild, we stay in a tent, and you are okay with a very basic condition there. Yeah, then there, there you get a better chance to see snow leopards. I was, I, in my trip, I saw two there. Wow. So it depends, but in another place where you stay, stay in a nice hotel and visit the habitat day, in the daytime. So I think uh, for the snow leopard can be different, but though in our previous trip just uh, ended maybe two weeks ago. So we set out uh, five uh, infrared cameras. All of them get uh, snow leopards. And we missed the snow leopards. Just uh, the snow leopards killed us uh, blue chip. Just uh, after we drive into the mountains. So when we drive past place, we see the blue ship. And we, I photographed the blue ship, the blue ship woke up. And then we drive into the valley to look for other animals. We come back, we see the body of that blue, uh, that blue ship. And then lots of uh, footprints of the snow leopards on the slope in the riverbed. So what about lynx? Lynx, yes, yes. And Bella is actually very good. Uh, she's she got a, such a sharp eyes to find the animals. Find so the animals. Saw five of the five five links in in this previous trip. Wow. Okay. And okay. also palace cat, palace cat, mm -hmm. and the Tibetan fox and the golden eagle. Uh, lot, lots of good stuff. Yeah. But just uh, um, we need to decide. You know what kind of. Uh, uh, place we can st we want to stay. Yeah, that Qinghai is a great place because of the uh, first uh, diverse uh, you know sparse population, small population in Qinghai and a vast land. So there's a lots of room for the wildlife, and also because of the religious belief, Tibetan people will never uh, kill wildlife. So you can see. Just the white yak. In our previous trip, we see more than one hundred white yaks, and we see many of them. They cross the river, they they fight each other, and they just graze, sleep. So lots of uh, you know, good stuff there. Okay. But it's very Thank cold, you. very cold. Thank you very much. Again, we do the, the, the low temperature. Okay, yeah, uh, Kusum. Yeah, uh, do you get vultures uh, in China, Philip? 
Pardon? Vultures? Vult yes, yes. Uh, Himalaya How many vultures, species? Namakayas. Uh, vultures. We have, let me see. About seven, eight, eight. Seven, so about seven different species of vultures, yeah, but in different places. Okay, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, Paul. Okay, uh, I wonder, would it be possible to uh, combine a trip with going some days on my own? Uh, I missed the part of your question. Uh, would you, can you? So yeah, I have a bit of poor receiver here. <laughs> I'm in the middle of the forest. Um, yeah. Would it be possible to combine a trip with going out some days on my own in nature? Uh, yes, but uh, generally speaking, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult because in Qinghai is so big. So we need to drive. And also sometimes uh, another thing that, uh, you know, some you need to, we need to talk with these uh, Officials, they don't know where you are unless you speak fluent Chinese. So sometimes can be very difficult in China. Yeah. So it is yes, okay. Yes, yeah. Just great. like in the reserve, you can you walk in this place in certain places. Uh, but in Qinghai can be pretty difficult. Mm. Yes, but you can theoretically you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I understand that it's difficult to get all the permits and so on. Mm -hmm. For foreigner. Uh, yeah, this is can be one in Qinghai is it's not a so uh, not a big problem with the permits, but it just uh, you know some some kind of sometimes there's some let's say forest uh, forestry stuff, so they don't know why you are there, why you are there, so they want to ask you questions mm -hmm. in Chinese, and then it is difficult to communicate. You know this is a problem. So generally, literally speaking, in, in Qinghai you don't need the permits. You only you go to Tibet. Okay. But would be the same for Chinese people here, actually. Problem same, to same. explain what you're doing to local people. Yeah. Oh, for Chinese people, because we all speak uh, Mandarin, so it's easy to communicate. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, guys, before we go on, let's take a group photo first, right? Okay. So um, please turn your camera, guys. Mark, thank you. Flavia, hello, Flavia. Hi, Victor. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't to uh, put the the camera because I am staying in another uh, meeting of okay. uh, job. I'm sorry. No problem. But, but we see your names. That's okay. Yeah, thank you. Javier, Javier, and Johnny. Hello, Johnny. Johnny. Hello. Hey, we got you, Javier. Thank you. And Johnny. Johnny, are you still in Belgium? All right. All right. We got you very well. Okay. Thank Look you. at the camera, please. And one, two, three, smile. Thank you very much. Let's go on. Okay. We can take more questions for Philip. Thank you. It was a really interesting conversation. Eh? I hope to see you soon. Yes, yes. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there any questions for Philip? All right. If there's no question, uh, uh, yes, Bella. Uh, Bella, you, you, you're mute, Bella. Sorry, sorry. I, I said I just checked the, the question. So um, there is a no exact answer for that, but we have we have over 40, 40 kinds of species, endemic species in Sichuan. So for a um, two weeks trip, we can accept uh, we can expect over 60 percent endemic species. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Bella. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your attending here. And um, we're very happy to see you guys every Friday. So, uh, oh, okay, Herbert. 
Yes, I have one question. Uh, Hello, yes, hey, Philip. Thank you very much, Philip, for uh, that good presentation. And happy to see you, Bella, and other people, all my friends, and uh, uh, Horacio from that far. Everybody. Okay, question here. Oh. Okay, very good. Do you have uh, a Chinese? Uh, budding festival or expo, uh, yeah. that's one. Two, when does it happen? And you need to know that information. And then are there a, a... Herbert, we lost you. Um, yeah, in the connection, internet. <laughs> You're free, Herbert. It's asking. Do you have... Yes, I hear me. Remember, we don't hear properly. Huh. I don't know. The question, do you hear me now? Herbert, um, why don't you leave your question on Facebook? Then we'll ask Philip to answer your question. Is that okay? I got a part of the uh, Herbert's question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Herbert. Okay, you stay like this. We'll move to uh, Marty. Yes, Marty. Well, it's okay. I just say thumb up, but uh, thank you very much for the great presentation, Philip. You're yeah, welcome. I mean, you. yeah, you, 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 you gave us a lot of examples and like bird, bird culture but haven't heard about you talking the beer culture or <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I assume that like in China, there must be different kind of like alcohol or something like wine or whatever risky. So I think there must be something nice over there, especially in Tibet or something like that. <laughs> Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yes, actually uh, we have, uh, you know, people here drink uh, as much beer as as you do, okay. As people in there in other other places do, but one particular thing is that in Sichuan is very famous for what we call what we call the fire water. So among the top ten, uh, so we call a liquor, liquor, liquor brand. Sichuan have six of them. The top ten in China, six of them. So we are. Uh, uh, we have a kind of saying, Chuan Jiu Yun Yan. Sichuan is the most famous for liquor or for spirits or fire water, whatever the name we use it. And Yunnan is famous for the tobaccos, you know. So in, since ancient times. So yes, we have lots of uh, liquors you can fail, uh, you can try. And well, if you go to Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, well, Tibetan people make a kind of a Tibetan beer. This kind of beer is strong, you know, relatively stronger than the beer we normally drink. It is about 15 to 20%. So they drink a lot. And well, yeah, just uh, uh, that kind of, uh, it is kind of life, part of life here. Yeah, yeah, there are lots of places you can try this, no problem, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome, You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Philip. Again, it's a nice presentation, and thank you. we learn a lot from you. Thank you, Philip. So, um, uh, yeah, next week we are still in China. You know, it's going to be a, a panel discussion from three speakers of burning hot spots in China, be led by Philip, and the speakers will be uh, Bella and. Wenyi or uh, Luke. So uh, we look forward to, to um, excellent panel discussion about birding our spots. So prepare your questions. Then you will learn a lot next week. So thank you yes, again, sir. everybody. Look forward to seeing you guys every Friday. Until next Friday. See you guys. Okay. Thank yes, you very sir. much. Bye. Yes, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.
Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.